Hey everyone, Disorderly Cone from the future. This video is a little bit long, so if you already know what's gone on with Time for Machine, I would recommend skipping to right here. However, if you don't know anything that's going on, I would recommend starting at the beginning. I did my best to condense everything that I possibly could, but it is a year and a half's worth of updates, so it's quite a bit of information to go through. All right, sit back and enjoy. <sighs> Time for Machine. A metal model company that often advertises themselves as premium with really neat models that often have some kind of movement associated with them. But this company has some pretty shady business practices. Hey everyone, I'm Disorderly Cone, and typically on the Groove Builders channel, we look at really cool things that we can build together, and I give you tips and tricks on how to complete those projects, like these metal earth models you see back here. Now, not too long ago, I did a video on the Marvel tank from Time for Machine. That was from their first Kickstarter they did. And although I didn't invest on the first Kickstarter, um, I can say that I had a really good time building that model. And I was completely unaware of all the previous Kickstarter stuff that they had from before. Now, after doing that video and receiving a lot of feedback from some of you guys out there, and also um, seeing what's going on with the second Kickstarter that's happened, it's come to my attention that it's very important for me to talk about the things that have taken place because I feel like if I don't, as someone who helps everyone build these metal models, I'm kind of doing a disservice to the entire industry. Now, I want to be very clear before we go any further here. I'm not looking to harass any of the Time for Machine staff, nor am I looking for them to have any severe issues related to their personal life. So please don't go out there and start, you know, harassing these people. That's not how we get things done. The way we get things done here is by voting with our dollars on future campaigns. And this is really the best way to send a message to any company, not going and harassing them and their home life. Now that I've said this, holy heck, time for machine. For those of you who don't know what's going on, these guys have been lying and lying and lying to a community of people that have been nothing but supportive to them since day one. And now things are getting really nasty, not only on their Kickstarter pages, but also on some of their social media pages. But before we kind of dive into what the current situation is, I think it's very important that we start at the beginning of where this whole thing started. And that starts with the Kickstarter campaign. For the sake of time, what we're gonna do is kind of summarize the first campaign. It went off, they got funded, and unfortunately there was some shipping issues and fulfillment issues, but everyone did get their models in the end. Tons of delays, but they did get their models in the end. So after that Kickstarter campaign, you would think that the company themselves, Time for Machine, would be able to get their things together. They would tighten up their bootlaces and maybe show some competence. No. On March 26, 2019, Time for Machine launched both of their campaigns on Indiegogo and Kickstarter for their brand new set of models. These campaigns would later go on to make over a million dollars combined. And this campaign was very successful in terms of raising money. Metal model builders were so excited for this project, it was completely funded within 24 hours. Which is pretty crazy when you consider that the models were about $100 each, if not not way more than that. And that to me is something that's kind of telling. When you're offering a premium product at a premium price, you really expect a premium experience. And that is what started to fall apart after the 13th update. You see, on the 13th update, they were telling us that everything was good, production was going to plan, surveys were almost 100% in, and delivery was on track. But on the 14th update, we were told that we were no longer going to be getting our models on the expected date. Now, this is something that most Kickstarter people that have invested in things before kind of learn to expect. There is pretty much always some kind of delay when you fund these projects. I would never recommend buying any of these products on these websites for a gift idea because realistically you're probably just not going to get it in time. I mean sure there are some programs that do it but the majority of them have some kind of delay. So to get this from Time for Machine, I mean that really wasn't unexpected. But what was unexpected was the continuous amounts of lies that came after that. Let's dive into another update here. 
On August 29th, 2019, Time for Machine released their 15th update. And this update kind of showed us everything that they were up to in respects to the delays. They were having some manufacturing problems and they very nonchalantly mentioned that yes, there's going to be delays. So with them already saying that October was the delay date um, after saying originally August, it um, kind of was a little bit more concerning. Are we gonna get these models before December? Um, can't really get mad at them right now because they are being at least a little bit transparent. They are keeping us up to date on the manufacturing. They're telling us their delays and they're showing us what the delays are. Communication and transparency with your backers are the most important things you need to do with any successful campaign on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. If you're not communicating, you're causing problems, you're causing angst and you're ruining your brand and this is very important because time for machine might be doing this right now very well but later on down the road things really start to fall apart <laughs> what am i talking about we all know about the 16th update on september 16th 2019 it was on that update that they let us all know that the testing had been completed on the models and they were gonna be sending them out in two waves. The first wave was to be sent out on October 15th, with about 10 days later, the second wave being released to the public. Everyone was extremely excited because we all thought we were gonna get these models for Christmas. But then we got update 17 on October 18th, 2019, which made absolutely no sense. You told us you were sending your models out and that everything had been completed, testing was basically done. Um, but in this update, you're telling us that you're packaging the models now and that uh, you hope to fulfill all the orders soon. No estimates on when they're going out. And being that it's the 18th, you should have already sent out the first wave. Very interesting. And why aren't you telling us what the delays were? Why? Is it now October 18th, already past the date where you told us you were gonna send out the first wave, and then you're just letting us know that you're packaging them now? I thought that was already done from before. Hmm. Oh well, we'll wait a little bit longer. I'm, I'm sure things are gonna clear up here. Update 18, October 31st, 2019. We find out that they have received parts from manufacturers that we were apparently waiting for, but none of us knew because the previous one didn't say anything about you waiting for parts. It said that you had paid for everything and that you were building the kits, but now you've received apparently all the parts and now you show us a video of you actually putting the metal into folders. I, I guess that's good, but uh, still kind of really far off from our delivery date. A little bit further on in this little update too, you see that they are actually telling us that the first wave they were talking about before is now going to be sent out between November 5th and November 10th. Okay, cool. And the second wave will be sent out... Oh, uh, another update needs to come out for that one. Okay, well, let's go to that next update already. I, I wonder what's going on here. Update 19, November 23rd, 2019. In this update, they tell us that they've successfully sent out both the first and second wave of models, and they should be clearing most custom places by the 15th of December. And then after that, there's gonna be some delivery time and possible some custom issues. So you might get your models at Christmas time. It might be a little bit after, but you're still gonna get them in and around the time. So, so no big deal, right? Well, okay, I really want that model for my kids and everything for Christmas time. And again, I understand that, you know, these, these Kickstarter campaigns aren't always a for sure thing. So I can't get really too mad at that, I guess. But uh, you're telling me that everything's set. That's good. But wait, wait a second. What about this on this bottom here? Steam liner? My steam liner and Heavenly Hercules are leaving the production line on the 28th of November. So then what was the second phase of your shipping then? I thought that was the steam liner. So now there's a third set of shipment? <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Three, three sets of shipping and things are still being produced even though you've said they've been completed production two updates ago. Okay, um, some holes are developing here, but I'm trusting you. 
but a lot of the backers don't, and that's why Time for Machine had to release their 20th update on December 10th, 2019. In this update, they try to clarify everything that they've been saying over the last couple of updates, and it really only makes things more confusing. In this update, they kind of tell us that the models they've made from the previous campaign that they included with this campaign have all been sent out, and that was the first wave. But for the Heavenly Hercules and the Dazzling Steamliner, and pretty much all of the other models that were exclusive to the second campaign, those ones are now being completed on December 16th. Which means, with everything going on, you should hopefully receive your models by the 1st of 2020. Uh, that should work out. Time for Machine updated their 22nd update on December 30th, 2019. Now, this update for a lot of people, especially myself, was a massive red flag and pretty much indicated to me that the corners were being cut at Time for Machine and in possibly the worst area to cut corners, your distribution. You see, with Update 22, we had a video showing a warehouse of all of this stuff in a room and our what appears to be models being put into bags and the thing is this is nowhere near my home at this point um if the delivery date was supposed to be basically the first of january 2020 why are all these models still sitting in a random warehouse with only one or maybe two workers working isn't that a little bit odd hmm i don't think we're gonna get our models on time I wonder when we're going to get them. January 9th, 2020, update 24. Here, Time for Machine tries to tell us what's going on in regards to our tracking numbers and why we haven't received anything and why the models are still not in our hands. Here we find out that all the models have been shipped in these massive containers. And basically, once they pass customs in our countries, they will then be given tracking numbers and those tracking numbers will be then sent to us. It's a really weird way of doing things. Um, I can honestly say that in my time doing business, I've never had that go down like that. Now, that being said, I've also never ordered something and maybe in this massive quantity. So maybe this is the way they do things. Um, but there's just a lot of weird things going on here, lack of communication. And in here, Time for Machine specifically talks about using a Chinese partner and our models being held up at a seaport. Now, I think that's very important. They are also saying right now that our models are held up because of a nationwide holiday. So we should be seeing these though in the later part of January, right? I mean, it can't take that long for these to clear customs. If only it was that easy, but we're dealing with time for machine. On January 29th and 30th of 2020, we got our 25th and 26th update. Now with these updates, they explained to us that they had sent two different shipments out, one to the United States and one to China. The one in the United States had basically been cut into two, with half of it going to the backers and the other half going to different stores in the area to be able to try to recruit some money from the extra production that had gone on with the different models that had different problems, whichever ones those were, because it kind of changed from time to time in those previous updates. But the Chinese side of things really gets confusing because they really had no updates. They said they had a lot of issues with the distributor and because of that, they were trying to figure out what to do. They ended up hiring a logistics company to kind of help them with the Chinese side of things and they hoped that everything would be worked out and all the numbers would be sent out as soon as possible. Well, great, hopes are all up. But we also had some pretty angry people too because all of a sudden Time for Machine started selling the models from the Kickstarter campaign on their website and people didn't understand why they were doing this. Now, their explanation was because again, much like they had sent the extra models to the United States, they need to try to recuperate the money from the extra time spent on production. An interesting strategy and one that can kind of be understood, but still there's something else fishy going on here. February 19th, 2020. We find ourselves with finally another update after complete radio silence from Time for Machine on every single platform. 
this update opens up as an apology to everybody saying, we're so sorry for not communicating with you. But all of that really is in the end completely stupid because you continue to do it throughout the other updates. But we'll, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little heated. <sighs> Woosa. In this update, they also tell us that the beer flu is the main reason why they've been having all of these issues with China. Now, I could understand that in this current time frame. I mean, it was January at this point. But when you had all these issues, I mean, this was October. And before that, you were saying August. So what is it? Was this, was this virus already present in the warehouses and in your distribution centers at this time? Or are you just really incompetent and are maybe lying about the time that you actually sent these models out? Or maybe, maybe, maybe this distribution company might be completely 100% incompetent. But, but you know what? I have to speculate because you don't give us anything to show that you're having a legitimate problem. All you've done up to this point is lie to us and lie to us and muddy all the information that you're giving to us. Now what we're left with is a bunch of angry backers that are feeling like they're being lied to at every single turn. And on top of that, these backers can now go onto the Time for Machine website and purchase the models they ordered over a year ago again and get them almost immediately. What is going on here? Now, scoot in the boot, we get to March 13th, 2020 with update 28. And here we find out that our parcels have been found in Russia when they were supposed to be in China. The whole reason why apparently this happened is that the Chinese company didn't want the beer flu to interfere with us getting our models. So they decided to send them to Russia. And then from Russia, they were supposed to be sent out to all of us. Um, somehow that didn't happen. And the Chinese company apparently went into insolvency and that's why Time for Machine took so long to get back to us and uh, was telling us all these lies because they were being lied to by this Chinese company. It seems like a really good scapegoat here um, because there's so many things before this um, that really lead to you having the problem and not this Chinese company. And I feel like you're always trying to use something else as an scapegoat, like this beer flu or this Chinese company. But in this update, you tell us that now all of this is coming to an end and we're going to be able to get our parcels being sent from Russia. Okay, now we're almost finished. We have one more update after this one, but this one is very important. We have to mention it. April 30th, 2020, we have update 30. And this update, we find out that all of our parcels are still inside of Moscow and they haven't actually left at all. It also gives us information about the Chinese logistics company being the main reason why they have all of these issues. But when you read it, it makes it sound like that Russian logistics company they had found also went through insolvency. So it's really confusing to try to figure out what exactly happened here and if we can even believe what we're reading. To try to reassure us, they try to use the previous Kickstarter campaign as proof to the pudding that they are going to get us our models. But being that we already know how much trouble that previous campaign had, I mean, you really can't use that as, oh look, we're good and we're going to make sure to make everything right. Okay, now we're finally on the last update as of this video. On May 6, 2020, we got update 34. And on this update, we are being asked to look out for any unauthorized sales of Time for Machine models. Wait, what is that? Wait, we have no update on where our models are and you're asking us as your backers to report unauthorized links of sales? So you're telling me that a Chinese company has taken your plans and all of your designs and has copied them and now is selling them cheaper, knockoffs as they might be, and there's also now fraudulent websites that are selling nothing at all, advertising your stuff. Whew! Sounds like karma came your way and now you're losing money. It's pretty silly that you would come to us and ask for help to report all of this fraud after you've lied to us so much. I mean, we had to go to the New York Toy Fair and basically threaten to boycott your booth for you to do an update on the campaign. That's pretty ridiculous. To one-up this, you make an advertisement where you squish one of the Heavenly Hercules inside of a hydraulic press. I mean, think about how many people have ordered that model that don't have it and just watched it get squished there. Pretty tone deaf, don't you think? 
I know I'm coming off a little bit heated here, but it isn't without good reason. The metal model community has only been around since 2006, and rather you're going on the Reddit or even some of the other boards that are around involving 3D metal models, you're always going to find a really humble community there. And that doesn't even really touch on the side of the community that does this for mental health. You know, as a soldier, I've got the opportunity to speak to a lot of other soldiers out there that really like to build these kinds of models because it kind of helps them get to their uh, zero, if you will. And for Time for Machine to come into this community and completely turn everything upside down, it's just totally disgusting to me. It's, it's not a good practice, and I just feel for everybody that's been hurt by this campaign. And this is right to Dennis here. I think you are a fantastic inventor. I think some of the cool projects you've been able to do over the years that I've been able to personally watch and see how they go have been really neat. The fact that you guys tried to launch another campaign when you were already having this campaign as an issue, I mean, that just goes to show how greedy your companies have become. You're a really creative guy. You got some really cool ideas. Don't let this greed destroy your company. I would love to be able to endorse your company. I would love to be able to say good things about Time for Machine, but your actions have completely destroyed its name and you've got to figure out something to make it better. And now we basically have to piece together what actually happened. What I'm using to get all of this is the information that's found in your comments and in those updates that I've read previously. Now, as I've gathered this information, I want to be clear. This is my interpretation and I'm not saying that this is 100% exactly what happened. I believe all of our money went to the production of our models. I do believe that there was some kind of an issue at production, and that issue costs a lot more money than they want to admit. This production mistake probably made it impossible for them to be able to meet all the demands for their models. And yeah, you guessed it, they didn't choose us. And in doing that, all these models went to the different stores, which is why we saw them for sale later on down the road. Now, I don't necessarily buy all of these models being locked up in Russia. I, I really don't. It, to me, it almost seems like they did another production run. And with them doing a second production run, that means more time had to be applied for the models to be even made, which is what I really think happened here. And I think that's why we haven't heard anything from them, because it just doesn't make any sense. There has to be a paper trail here somewhere. And as we all know, Time for Machine is not going to give us that. At the core of the problem with everything that's happened here is communication. And I feel like that's happening a lot today, not just in Time for Machine, but in the world. We have a real issue with communication. And when all you need to do is just post a little update here and there, maybe once a week, even if it's just nothing, just saying hi, hello, letting you guys know what's going on. I mean, if, if that is asking too much, you really shouldn't be in business. I mean, we have way too much stuff going on in the world today to have to deal with your crap. And this is supposed to be fun. I don't see anyone having fun anymore. And with that, everyone, we're at the end of our video. Yes, I know this was a long one and there was a lot of ranting and raving in there, but I hope you got all the information you were looking for. And I really do hope that we get our models here in the end. Once we do, I will gladly do a video update showing you what came and how long it took to actually get the project. Of course, when I get the model, I will also do a build video and a review on the model because that's why I bought it to begin with. But I don't know if I'm going to be investing in any more Time for Machine projects, at least for the time being, until I can see the company come to a standard that I can be proud to back. Everyone, have a great week, and until next time, Keep building.